Hi everybody, it's Dara, and I got the message to turn on the camera before I empty out my grocery bags, before I do anything. It was just, the message was turn on the camera because we still need to talk about food, even though I've done so many videos on this channel about food. I think there were about 2,000. I am going to start making them available again. I think now there's only like 200 up, and I think each month I'll highlight and have some videos that are applicable for that month. So I just thought after like eight years of making food, I'm like, nobody needs me for that anymore. But apparently uh, they do. I think people still need to want to talk about food and why certain things are healthier than others. For example, I was getting my hair done today and um, the hairstylist said, so what can I cook with? Which oil, like olive oil? And I'm like, no, olive oil changes its molecular structure. So it's kind of artery clogging when we heat it. It's a-okay to drizzle fresh, get this, not rancid olive oil, like Nuvo, N-U-V-O. They make an amazingly fresh olive oil, which when olive oil is fresh, you'll have like a kick, like it'll give you like a kick. And so, we don't want, we want to drizzle olive oil on after the food is cooked. So to cook, you may want to use coconut oil. She didn't like coconut flavor, so I suggested ghee. Um, we don't want to use palm oil because it's not good for the environment to use palm oil, although that doesn't change its molecular structure. I still stand by steaming your vegetables when you don't need to cook it in oil, and then you could drizzle some on after. So it's been becoming clear to me that not everybody knows what I know about food and maybe don't, people don't do it in the fast way that I do it because I have discovered that I am one of the fastest. I'm like the fastest in the West. Like remember the bottom of the bowl where we, it's the bottom of the bowl. Oh my gosh, you guys, you can get these on Amazon. So they're called enamelware. Where I got them in Paris, this came home from Paris. So bottom of the bowl dressing, if you have a nut butter or tahini and you need to mix it and you wouldn't just put a glop of tahini on top of your salad because it would get stuck or any kind of nut butter, you can mix it at the bottom of the bowl. Maybe the basics to a salad dressing are as follows. A fat, could be an oil, could be a nut butter, could be tahini, hemp seeds, hemp butter, salt, seasoning, garlic, anything like that. Um, any seasoning you want, any herbs you want. And then you need a bright, something bright, a citrus. You may need a uh, lemon, you can use grapefruit, you can use lime, you can use orange. Um, if you don't have any fresh citrus, then use apple cider vinegar because it doesn't make your body acidic. Balsamic vinegar, while delicious and can be used from time to time if we're trying to alkalize our body and be calmer and less acidic. Um, then we will want apple cider vinegar. So we have a fat, we have seasoning, we have a brightness, and you may want a titch of something sweet, like um, maybe a little coconut sugar, coconut syrup, um, a date. So anyway, you mash it all at the bottom, and then you throw whatever cut up veggies you have, and then you only have one bowl that's messed up, and it's fantastic. Hey, good evening. Let me just lower this. So we still need to talk about food. We need to talk about why, how do you have a good quick snack if you want a sweet? Take a date with a little nut butter, some, maybe a banana inside of romaine. Maybe you have a little banana and nut butter and a sprinkle of salt. So do you guys wanna know what happened and why I'm not raw? Do I think raw is the most important? Do I think it's the most healing, most detoxifying? 100% yes. I was pretty much 100%, 99% raw for 10 years. And that's what all my videos were about, was how to live the raw food lifestyle, how to be raw, how to do it quickly and easily. How do you make soups and smoothies? There is an ebook that came out of it. The ebook for soups and smoothies is like my number one answer to how do I get started eating raw or feeling healthier or anything like that. You want to blend a smoothie every morning with a lot of greens. And then you are going to, it's gonna change what you choose the rest of the day. 
Maybe you have celery juice first thing and then you make a smoothie with chia seeds and it lasts longer in your body. Then if you're so inclined, you can make my one true thing green soup and or any of my soups and then you take that in a mason jar to work, to school, to out to shopping, out to the beach, wherever you're going, you take, hi, hi Tundra. So it's really important just to set yourself up for success. Have the things you like. So for example, I love Persian cucumbers. So these could be washed off and just cut in half and sprinkled with salt and that's an amazing snack. I've been getting a lot of baby spinach and I either blend this spinach into a super smoothie. The airplanes have been so loud lately, it's crazy. I don't know if they always were, and now I'm just sensitive to them. I just finished my course, you guys. It's gonna come out Saturday, maybe Sunday. Um, it's on life, purpose, and direction, and it's the number one way that I've been helping people in sessions. It's kind of like my secret weapon. <laughs> so, raw spinach. Salad, great. Chopped up, great. In a smoothie, great. Soup, great. Or sometimes I just take a nonstick pan, a drop, couple drops of water, and I hold, take a handful and I put it in and I cover the pan so that the spinach just wilts and it makes it really nice to eat with. Um, I have a rice cooker. And so last night I made quinoa and I didn't have enough quinoa. I'd already put the water in the rice cooker and there was like one cup of quinoa. So then I was like, oh, I already have it in and I don't have any more quinoa. So I took these lentils and I put a couple of lentils in. So it was a lentil quinoa mix that I served with wilted spinach and sauteed firm tofu. For all of those 10 years, I never ever ate tofu really. Maybe not ever, but it wasn't part of my diet. Nor really was cooked quinoa. It all happened when I went to India, right? I had traveled to London and Paris. I managed to be raw in winter in London and Paris. And then when I went to travel, let's see, on my 50th birthday, I went to India and I, of course, ate cooked food in India. And I fell so in love with the Indian food that I felt passionate and compelled to come home and make um, Indian style food in a clean way. Like I'd cook with coconut oil and you know, I wouldn't use weird oils that would uh, clog the arteries and I didn't overcook the vegetables. I liked them light and fresh and feeling like they're still alive. So I started incorporating cooked and I just felt grounded and I felt good. I also feel that I did the raw food thing for 10 years. So that's like a really good cleanup, right? So I think raw food is the best for feeling your most energized, for um, detoxifying, for cleaning up. So then you can pay attention to what your body's intuition wants, because really what we all want to do is clean up so that we can not have cravings based on yeast or parasites or weird cravings because we're used to and addicted to certain foods. We want to do it from a place of cleanliness. That way, if we crave something that's not on the raw food diet or not even vegan, we know it's coming from a place of our body's knowledge and intuition. Thank you for the hair compliment. So yes, my hair lady today, uh, Sylvia, she wanted to know about cooking and oils and, and I thought, you know, I still need to share food because I do it really quickly. Like yesterday, um, Patrick was hungry and I was like, you could order something, but like it's not gonna be as healthy as what's here and it will take me as fast to make it. So I made like the quickest, I took this gluten-free bread, I put some vegan cream cheese on it, um, I did the spinach, one thing I love, love doing, especially at this time of year when it starts to get cooler and I love the change of weather, even just a little bit here in California, be able to wear long sleeves and jeans. So I love eggplant. So eggplant traditionally, if you do it the traditional way, like you're making a bengen barta, you cut it in half, you score the inside, you sprinkle it with salt and you let it sweat. And then you squeeze out the water takes away the bitterness, takes away some of the excess moisture, and then you bake it. 
and then you scoop out the inside and it's just the softest eggplant deliciousness. So that's one way that I do it. But if I'm in a hurry, I wash the eggplant, cut off the end, cut it into teeny, teeny, tiny cubes. Maybe not that teeny because it gets mushy. And I do, I saute onions and garlic or just garlic, usually onions, in coconut oil. And then I put the eggplant in with some cut up cherries, tomatoes, maybe some spinach at the end. And I make like a little, my version of ratatouille. You can do red peppers, but if you cut it small and you saute it, it's going to go and cover it. Um, you cover it to steam it, then you will be fine. So I like things fast. When I'm hungry, I wanna make food and I don't wanna be in the kitchen a long time. Celery juice for juice in the morning. It's like the number one game-changing situation. It makes me crave apples all day. It makes me crave raw food. So I have to say that I mostly eat raw. I mean, if I have my choice to have this cut up with um, just a squeeze of lemon, some salt, a little bit of olive oil, a big bowl of this, and I'm happy. And then maybe a toast some gluten-free bread, but that's not raw. Flax crackers with cream cheese, vegan cream cheese. We have bananas, we have more celery. Um, for some reason, more cucumbers. It looks like I got double. So make some, it's nice to have a rice cooker. That way you can make quinoa, quinoa rice combo. You like my hair, thank you. I want to turn down this light a little bit. Seems a little bright. So what else? Does anybody want to know anything? Do you want to know about my next, the course that's coming out? Do you want to know about food? Do you want to hear more about, oh, how I feel? <sighs> you know, when you eat only raw food and, you know, I never liked the labels like raw foodist or vegan or anything because I always wanted to know, well, tell me what you eat because somebody vegan may not be as healthy as somebody who eats meat and here's why. You can be vegan and eat potato chips and beer all day white fluffy foods, potatoes. You could just sit there and eat potatoes all day and eat gluten and you're a vegan. Does that tell me you're healthy? No. If you're eating a lot of this and you have a little piece of meat or a little egg or whatever, you're gonna be healthier. So health factor, I obviously believe plant-based, but I do believe everybody's different, so there's no judgment and I love everybody no, what, no matter what they eat. But the people I relate to the most are the ones that are eating a lot. Of vegetables so how do I feel I remember when I think you you feel more grounded you feel I think that I when I had raw food one of the ways in which I was able to be raw was because I had hot tonics all day like I would make a hot tonic put it in a thermos drink it throughout the day I would reheat my tonic so much so that I was like the queen of burning the pot I was always like forgetting about it and burning a pot Hot liquid, so I need heat. So having, you know, hot eggplant with a little quinoa and then some romaine or spinach is like, it feels very grounding. That being said, if I needed to lose weight, my if my energy felt down, then, and I felt too rooted or too grounded, then we know how to up it, right? You eat fruits and you feel up and fruity. You eat a lot of greens and you're gonna feel alkaline. And so I usually tend, if given the choice, raw versus cooked during the day, I'm gonna have raw. And then usually at night, something a little warm. And I think that, you know, it's not as like, oh my God, running around, like hopping on the bike, which maybe, you know, you do high raw. Maybe you do all raw. Maybe raw doesn't sit with you. But I, I always kind of, thought it was funny when people were like, oh no, raw food gives me a stomach ache. And I would kind of always know that it's not the raw food. It's like what, what's lining the colon, what you had before the raw food. It's like what's been gathering for years. So I'm a huge proponent of green juices, green smoothies, eating lots of vegetables, getting colon hydrotherapy, all that stuff. Rebounding, sunshine, still at it your morning fruits and your warm dinners. That's a lovely thing to do. And greens, I feel my best. Like when I don't have greens, I don't feel, it's just psychologically and physically, I feel not good. So menopause, Ta -ta -ta. <laughs> I am now 52, I'll be 53 in December. 
and there are no gray hairs on my head that I know of. Maybe one, I don't know. And I don't have menopause. And I don't, as far as I last saw Dr. Sadegi, he said no perimenopause either. I've been rather moody and my periods have been like, uh, like I get crazy. The PMS is like, uh, and like just wow. So I think that the best thing we can do is eat a lot of greens. Stay away from the food that cause inflammation, the foods. Like we don't wanna eat gluten, we don't wanna have a lot of caffeine, we don't wanna like any of the things that they say to not have so to avoid PMS. I'm feeling it's the same thing with menopause. I actually feel like I'm gonna go into it gracefully. I do not think I'm gonna have hot flashes. I do not think I'm gonna go into menopause for a number of years still regular but if you're experiencing it and you have the hot flashes i'm gonna say raw food diet <laughs> i'm gonna say clean yourself up or steamed veggies you know really to be very mindful of eliminating things that are going to mess with your hormones i know a lot of women stay away from soy tofu soy sauce um estrogen boosting things like and i would see a naturopath you're craving sauteed potatoes and collard greens. I do believe, are they healthy? Are potatoes healthy? Well, maybe some people would say no. For me, if I want a potato or little pieces of cubed potatoes, I will have them and it will feel good. So I really do think it's important how you are addressing your food. If you say I'm eating these and they're bad, they're gonna be bad. Um, know what you're doing. Know that you need that density and you need to feel grounded. If you start to feel too rooted, too grounded, then root vegetables like beets, potatoes, and carrots and that, but it's starting to be winter here anyway. Yeah, no sugar, no gluten, or high salt. Um, you're doing raw food now and you have no issues, light menstruals. I feel that I wanna eat more raw food. I don't need to be 100% raw or 100% anything, but I have definitely seen fluctuations in my moods, in my lightness of being, and raw food is the lightest. Still, still gonna say that. <laughs> Mm. Stress. Oh, you're not 100%. We don't need to be 100% anything. We're human. So, I have found the times that I have had stress, my thyroid takes a dip, I gain weight, I feel sluggish, tired, and depressed, and the minute I address what's causing me stress and I speak up for myself, thyroid, and I make the changes happen, the stress goes away and the weight comes off in like within the month. It could be a couple of weeks, but definitely within the month. So we really, out of everything, you could eat the best diet in the world. You could eat cucumbers and romaine all day long with spirulina, lemon juice and green juices and a couple tonics here and there. But if something's coming at you and you're letting it in and it's stressful, it's gonna hurt you. So. We really wanna pay attention. We wanna be in a good astrogeographical location. If you are on a Pluto line and it's hard for you, consider managing it. That's what my intro to astrogeography course is. If you find out you're living, it shows you how to find out what lines you're living on, energies you're swimming in. Because I realize you could be doing yoga, raw food, feng shui, but if you're living on a line that's hard for you, for example, when I was on my Neptune line in Florida, I, could, I wasn't doing any of this. The minute I moved to California, I had success in my jewelry business. Then I decided to go into raw food and I met David Wolf. And I'm, you know, I'm having like all of these high vibe Jupiter rising experiences. So I do think that where we are living and what planetary energies we're swimming in is first. And don't worry if you're living on a not so great line or a challenging line, there's ways to deal with it, which I show you. Then you start doing all the things. You have to eat, like food isn't everything, but it's the first thing because after you figure out where you're living. And because you can clean yourself up so you can hear your own heart, your own mission, which is my next course that's coming out this weekend. And it's literally the key to how I've been helping people in private sessions. Don't you just want conviction? Don't you just want to know which direction, which little voice inside of you needs to be heard? 
how to act, what to do, what to say, how to be in relationship, which career direction, it's in the next little mini. And you can buy the nodules. You can, only, you, you, you can buy your North Node and your partners if you want, or your child's, or you can get the whole thing to get everybody. So um, I really think that where you're living is important and having, having conviction and certainty about what you're doing, not wishy-washy, not like, I'm gonna eat this, but is it good for me? I'm gonna live here, but I'm not sure. I think I'm supposed to be this, but I'm not sure. No, we need the conviction. We need that feeling of like, yes, until we don't have it anymore. But the, the nodes in astrology really help with that. And so, hi, roller girl, you're driving. Don't, don't text and drive. So, um, you know, where you are and what you're eating, then your home, feng shui, and then you have some space to listen to your heart, to follow your north node, which is the next course. It's coming out like Tasha, my assistant, is like doing the back end of it right now, and I was just fixing the sales copy, but it's like done. I worked on it for like seven months. You're at a stoplight. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I knew you're safe. So I think that it's really important to manage your stress to make your home feel harmonious, to, you know, the food helps your digestion, like the cheese flowing in your body, your blood is flowing, your heart and your gut and your brain, your major intelligence centers are getting enough blood, enough oxygen, enough nutrients. So super important, body movement, food, where you're living, what energies you're swimming in. It's creating your home to be clutter free and harmonious and feel good, so important when you're stepping out into the world. So I'm gonna continue talking about all of these things because they're all important. They all play a role in how happy we are, how our insides feel. Nobody feels sexy and happy when we're like clogged. So we gotta unclog, which is why you wanna eat a lot of greens and get colon hydrotherapy and jump up and down on a rebounder and drink juices and smoothies, which I have the eBooks I highly recommend. Have tonics, tonify your spleen, which I did 10 years of hot tonics with the raw food. I think I'm gonna make a tonic now. Um, I'm gonna make dinner, it's gonna be steamed spinach um, some eggplant, little pieces of eggplant with tomato and onions and garlic. And maybe I'll find some, maybe I'll just make the lentils or I'll find some quinoa or rice. Um, and then I really think that we pay attention to our food. We pay attention to our larger surroundings, astrogeography. We pay attention to our home harmony, that's feng shui. And then let's find out where our north node is, our spiritual shining star. And I tell you what to do about it. We get to identify what yours is. I am living according to my north node in such a big way that is the joy that I'm expressing. Like I'm really doing it and I share my personal story. So sign up for my newsletter if you want to be notified. Oh, the tonic DVD. That's an oldie and I hope goodie. There's a new tonic ebook out. You had eggplant tonight for dinner. You know what? You're on the rast coast, the east coast. You know, eggplant makes me feel like home. Like cooked eggplant makes me think of my mom. It just feels like home. So it's so important to eat, I figured, east coast. Um, Yesenia. Oh, you've been with me a long time. Over on Instagram, I realized that some um, new people don't even know that I have a YouTube channel, which is so funny. So I'm like, can you be making the videos? We have the private, well, it's private. It's a closed group on Facebook called Live with Dara DuBonnet. So you can join that. Um, it's where I'll put, like, if anybody has questions about feng shui or astrogeography, that's where we can live. Um, food will most likely go here and touching on other things, of course. And Instagram is just... Instagram and fun. Are you guys all on it? Um, you're in Jerseyville too, you seen yet? So um, that's why I like this weather. It wasn't a food video, but it's a food video. Raw food is the best for feeling energized, youthful, cleaning up your body. Cooked food grounds you. I love raw food. I love some cooked food. You follow me on, okay, follow me on Instagram because it's just a little daily party over there. 
and I'll be showing up more here. I love you guys. Get your greens on. Get some body movement on. Figure out where you are astrogeographically so you know what you're dealing with. What pool are you swimming in? There's a course that I have on my website. You like YouTube better? I like to know that. Thank you, my blonde hair. I keep getting compliments on having the blonde. This is like the old days. Remember when it was long and there was like kind of dark here, my natural color, and then it had blonde and it was long? That's what it's reminding me of. So I'm returning to my roots. <laughs> my lighter, brighter head with some roots. I'm gonna go do something magic here. I hope you guys make magic at home. Stay tuned, Instagram, Facebook, Live with Dara DuVernay, and my website because I send newsletters out and post blogs. Thank you guys. I'll see you super soon, yo. Thank you, Sutton. Aw, my oldies, my good. I do a video on fashion. I got this in Lisbon and I'm wearing Lee jeans. You guys can't see the little belt. They're cropped, the jeans. I show outfits on Instagram, but I definitely should. The top is so like fun. It's a great color. It's Jupiter Day. Today's Thursday. So Jupiter rules Thursdays, which is usually like this blue. I'll wear like a blue blue. But this feels joyful to me too and expansive. Which I got it on my Jupiter Midheaven line. So how much more expansive can you get? I'm on a Jupiter rising line here in California and in Lisbon. I was on a Jupiter Midheaven line. So here I'm seen as joyful and optimistic and faithful. There, it gets reflected back to me from society. It was like everywhere I went, people smiled at me and gave me things and it was really fun. So both places are really good. Thank you for the thumbs up. I love thumbs up. Laura B, it's in the house. So yeah, I love the green and I'll be seeing you guys over on Instagram and Facebook. I will see you there and I'll be back soon. Thank you.